Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. According to Moses, if a man marries a woman and she becomes displeasing to him, he can give her a certificate of divorce and send her from his house. Displeasing is a very subjective word to interpret. In the time of Jesus, there were two rabbinic schools of thought. One school said that a man could only divorce his wife for serious reasons, such as adultery or severe misconduct. The other school said that a man could divorce his wife for trivial reasons, such as spoiling his dinner, for example. Not only do these opinions and even Moses' law show a complete disregard for women, but they also also show a complete disregard for God's good purposes for marriage. Some Pharisees came to, t to Jesus to test him and find out what side of the argument he stood on. Jesus begins reminding them that about what marriage is. Marriage is more than a, a legal contract between two parties. God has instituted marriage and Jesus reminds them that God intends marriage to be one of the closest relationships a person will ever enter into. Marriage relationship is meant to take precedence over all other relationships in our lives, including our relationship with our parents. In marriage, two people become one flesh. What this means is not explained in the Bible, but it invites us to reflect on the ways two people can become one. Two becoming one flesh suggests the whole person, body, mind and spirit are somehow united. It's a union where two people are in companionship with one another, equals who complement each other, support, protect and help each other. In this relationship, each person makes room for the other and gives priority to the relationship. Marriage is meant to be a safe place where two people can feel at home with each other's presence and give themselves to each other in body, mind, and spirit. It's meant to be a place where two people can be complete them, completely themselves, warts and all, and still accept, love, and forgive each other. It's meant to be a place where each person is able to grow and become more and more the person God intended them to be a place where two people can learn and practice what it means to love another human being as they learn to treat each other with patience, kindness, generosity, humility, and so on. When marriage reflects God's intention and children are brought into that relationship, it provides a nurturing, loving, safe, supportive, and stable place for those children. Now, most people who have asked me to officiate at their wedding have come with high hopes of, filling, of a fulfilling future together. They profess to love each other. They're committed to keeping their marriage vows to each other. And if they already have or want children, they have high hopes of providing them with a home where they can thrive. People come with high hopes but we are broken people living in a broken world. Jesus says we have hard hearts. And in marriage, when two hard hearts clash, they can end up breaking one another. After the wedding, for many people, it isn't too long before the shine begins to wear off. Misunderstandings, poor listening, unspoken expectations, Money problems, conflicting priorities, all begin to creep in. Sometimes there are conflicts with parents and family. Sometimes there are disagreements about how to raise children. And over time, resentment can grow over not being appreciated or being taken for granted or for being treated unfairly. And sometimes... People harden their hearts and play power games. They criticise and blame. They show contempt 
by expressing sarcasm, mockery, ridicule, and name-calling. They become defensive, they make excuses, they play victim, or they give their partner the silent treatment. And all these behaviours are destructive, and over time, they can break the bond of unity between married couples. One of the most destructive forces in marriage is when people betray their partner's trust. This can happen when people lie or don't keep promises and commitments. When trust is broken, intimacy, safety, and security in the relationship begin to die. One of the most destructive betrayers of trust is infidelity, because it is a betrayal that breaks trust at a physical, emotional, and spiritual level, taking a knife to the two who have become one and cutting them apart. When a relationship is torn apart by infidelity, humanly speaking, it often seems impossible to repair. Yet Jesus does not give up on marriages that have experienced something even as destructive as adultery. Jesus says Moses allowed divorce because people are hard-hearted. Hard hearts are hearts that are stubborn and refuse to change, to give and forgive. Now, it may seem impossible, but God can change hard hearts. And even something as destructive as infidelity can be forgiven. Many marriages that seem beyond repair, including where infidelity occurred, have actually been healed. What's happened, what has happened, is a softening of hearts when this has happened, a willingness to admit fault, a willingness to change, and a willingness to forgive. Forgiveness does not come naturally, though, for most people. For most people, retribution and revenge comes much more easily. And often the power to forgive needs to come from outside ourselves, from the gracious love that comes from God and is freely showered upon us through Jesus Christ. And even though Jesus says that people should not separate what God has joined together, he also knows that in this broken world, many couples will get to the point where the only reasonable alternative is to separate and divorce. And sometimes it's because the relationship is not safe. Sometimes their differences cause unbearable emotional pain. And sometimes they're unable to overcome betrayal and infidelity. When two people divorce, they're tearing apart what God has put together. So no wonder divorce is painful. One entity is split into two, and the result is an open and painful wound. The effects of divorce almost always spread out like ripples in a pool to touch children, parents, siblings, and friends. But it's interesting that immediately after Jesus taught about marriage and divorce, we're told people were bringing children to him. And the disciples showed their lack of compassion for the children. And we're told that Jesus was indignant about this. He took the children in his arms and placed his hands on them and blessed them. When a marriage breaks apart, it almost always leaves couples hurting and vulnerable. And the last thing they need is to be treated harshly or rejected. What they need is love, acceptance, and support. And as with all people who are hurting, Jesus comes to people whose marriages are in trouble and whose marriages have broken, and he gives them what they need. He takes them into his arms, showing that he loves them, accepts them, and forgives them. Only with love and forgiveness can the hurt of damaged and broken marriages begin to heal. And therefore, as a body of Christ, that is a stance that we need to take. Most people whose marriages break down 
are already experiencing the full pain of their situation. The last thing they need is for the church to throw stones at them. Instead, like Jesus, we need to walk with them and to assure them that with him, there is always hope and always the option for a new beginning. Amen.